My name um, Kabuye is uh, Naji. Yeah, I'm a Uganda and a queer rights, a queer rights activist and a refugee living in the Netherlands now since 2017. Can you tell me how you identify? Oh. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I know is I just I don't know who I am, but the only thing I I, I know that I, I just know what I'm not. I, what I know is I'm not straight, but yeah, I I identify as queer, gay, bisexual. And, yeah. Who was the first person you came out to, and how did it go? Wow, Lily for me it was not Lily. It was not really coming out because I was we were just busted. I and the partner I had that time that were in an, an, an action and, and somebody bumped into us. So, yeah, and I was reported to my mom. And yes, when my mom asked, yeah, is it true? I said, yes, it's true. I think I'm different. So I always I always call that my coming out because many friends of mine think that I had the opportunity to say no. But, yeah. It was tough, but I never regretted it because, yeah, that, that's what who I was. Yeah. Whatever happened was really horrible, but yeah. yeah. How did coming out make you feel? In a way, I knew many, many young people at that age who were struggling, who were doing things, and we thought that, no, we are not, we are not anything, we just enjoy doing things with the boys and yeah we never discussed sexuality and but yeah you know when you come out in a way and people are abusing you and condemning you but then there's this group that comes to you discreetly and say yeah i'm also like that man i think yeah it's so also in a way it's, yeah people know who i am ask accept me the way i am or leave me in a way you feel relieved in a way i could yeah. say what has been the most supportive coming out experience for you? When I came out, I was thrown out of my parents' house and I had to live on the streets. But the most important thing is that I met many queer people on the streets who were surviving on nothing, waking up with nothing to eat. But when they knew, when they had my story, they welcomed me. Yeah, we slept 10 people in one room, but and we shared everything that we, we could, everybody could get. So for me, wow, I was like, okay, that was really, yeah, I had so many stories and, you know, people giving you the little they have, sharing a slice of bread for people. And I mean, it's not enough, but that, that feeling of the love that people have for each other. I was like, wow, I met a family now. What has been the hardest thing about coming out? I lost I, I I lost my family. I lost my education because I was a private student at the university and my parents couldn't pay my school fees anymore because the, yeah, my mom said, yeah, why should we waste our money on a cast child? Yeah. So that was hard. And of course, <laughs> leaving losing your brothers and everybody that you have known for, for so many years since you were a child, because yeah, people think, wow, he's gay, he's, he's not part of us. Yeah, that was kind of hard, but yeah, it was hard then. When was the last time you came out to someone? Of course, I'm a Ugandan, so I know how homophobic some people can be. And I know how people, sometimes people presume or people have a picture of who a queer person is. And being a little bit, people, not so many people will see me and call me queer. Every time I meet new people, especially of my background, I always make myself clear that please, I don't know whether I'm gay or this or this, but what I know I'm not straight. So please, just to be sure that you don't say anything stupid. And when did I say that? Last, last Saturday, not, not, not last Saturday, but the other Saturday. Because I was, I, I was at a barbecue and at a Ugandan barbecue in Amsterdam. And I told guys I was with the group, yeah, I'm queer. So just to be sure that you don't ruin my evening by saying something in prison that will escalate a confrontation. Do you have any advice for LGBTQI plus people who are struggling with coming out? 
Uh, wow, well, yes. Yes. To the young people of the Netherlands across the globe. I've been in, into active activism since 2007. And that has put me in a position of meeting many people, queer, many closeted. But I tell you that you owe it to yourself to live, to be yourself. The people that we are afraid of coming out to, they are either living their happy life as straight people or they are also struggling with their own sexuality. So the straight are living their happy life and these other people that you may fear coming out to, they are waiting for another person to take a step. I've met many people that are trapped in marriages, in relationships because of that fear. And I tell you, you live a miserable life. And we have one life. So we live it to fullest by being who you are. People will accept you. Those who are meant to be in your life will accept you the way you are. And those who are not, even if you don't come out to them, they'll find a reason to go away. So yeah. live, your, live, 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 live. Be yourself. Coming out is a personal decision, but I only employ you. You feel relieved that you are yourself. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, one thing I would love to say is that is that I think we just owe it to another generation. Because I believe that if the people before us had not taken steps of coming out, however hard the situations were, would not be having this discussion now. So I also think that sometimes things of coming out and speaking up for rights, for, our, for queer rights, it goes beyond us. It goes beyond personal or to other generation that I myself, I went through so many things as a queer person that I never, I don't want my daughter, if she ever comes out a lesbian or a friend or my niece to ever go through what I went through. And yes, things don't change by silence. Things change by speaking out. Want to hear more coming out stories? Please visit lighterpride.nl.